Welcome to Mastering Mel for Maya, a free companion to my popular Python for Maya course linked in the video description below. In part 5 of our video series, we'll be learning about how to give some logic to how our code runs using if statements, switches, and the ternary operator. Often, we want our code to be able to make decisions based on some conditions. That way, our code can be smart enough to do the right thing in different situations. For example, we may want our code to work differently if the object is a joint than if it is a camera. We can define the decision-making process in a few ways. The first is the if-else statement. We can say that if a condition is met, we do something, and if it isn't met, then we do something else. Usually, the logic is stored inside curly braces, but if the logic takes just a single line, you can put the whole statement without curly braces on a single line. For clarity though, I always use curly braces, because it's easier to add logic later, and you don't risk adding errors to your code. So let's define two variables, and say if one is greater than the other, then we print out this word. So first, I'm going to say int foo is equal to 23. And I'm going to say int spam is equal to 50. And I'm going to say that if foo is greater than spam, then I'm going to say print foo is bigger. If I run this right now, nothing happens. This is because foo is smaller than spam, 23 is less than 50. If, however, I flip this around and say foo is less than spam, and I should change this to foo is smaller, it will trigger. This is the simplest if statement. You can also add multiple conditions. So I can say else if, and I can give another condition inside parentheses. So I can say spam is greater than foo, then print spam is bigger. And finally, if no other condition is met, we can just use the default, which is else. We can say print, they are equal. And now if I run this, you can see that it says spam is bigger because spam is currently larger. If I change foo to equal the same value as spam, you can see that it prints they are equal. And if I were to flip this and make spam smaller, you can see that it says foo is bigger. Both the else if and the else statement are optional. You don't have to give the else if statement if you don't want to, and similarly you don't have to give the else statement either. Similar to the if statement is a ternary operator, which is used to define values based on a condition so here I can say int age, and I'll give it a condition. I'll say if foo is greater than spam, and I use the question mark to say, please check this. Then I give it the value I want. Let's say I want to say 18. But if it's not true, then I can give the value 23. And I separate this with a colon. So what we're saying is that if this is true, then give this value, otherwise give this one. And then we can say print age. If I now run this, you can see that age is equal to 18. Ignore the errors, it's just because I'm redefining age again. But if I were to change foo and spam, or if I change this condition to say if foo is less than spam, age is now 23. And this is because this condition is now false, which means that this statement does not get evaluated, but this does. This is the same as saying, if foo is less than spam, age is equal to 18, else, age is equal to 23. 
oops, I forgot the dollar sign. And now if I run this, you can see that age is 23. Similar to the if statement is the switch statement. So I'm going to define a color. So I'm going to say string. My color is equal to green. And now, depending on what my color is, I want to do different things. So I say switch color, or I'm sorry, my color. And then in curly braces, I define my cases. So I say case green colon, and I'll say print color is green. And now that this case has been triggered, I say break. I can give another case and I'll say red. I'll say print. This is the color of an apple. And I'll say break again. And if nothing has been found, I can say default. And I'll say print. This is not a known color. And a reminder to put semicolons after every line. And again, after the default, we break. So now if I run this, you can see that it says color is green. And if I change this to red, it says this is the color of an apple. And if I change it to blue, it says this is not a known color. This is the same as saying if my color is equal to blue. This is the same as saying if my color is equal to green. Print color is green. Else if my color is equal to red, then print this is the color of an apple. And if no other case is met, we'll say print this is not a known color. And the reason we put this break is because the switch can actually compare many things. And it'll actually compare if it's green, red, default, and it can keep going on. And if we want it to stop, we need to use the word break. This is so that we aren't wasting computer cycles. Also notice that when we're comparing values in an if statement, you need to use double equal signs. A single equal symbol, like here, is an assignment. We're saying my color is blue. But when you use double equal symbols, you're actually checking if it's equal to that. So this is checking if these two are equal, whereas a single equals is only assigning it. So now let's create a simple if statement to check if we have something selected. So I'm going to say string because we need to store the names of what we have selected in a variable called selection, and I need to make it an array. So I use square brackets is equal to, and using backticks, I'll say ls dash selection to get us to list our selection. So if I say print selection, it currently doesn't do anything. But if I have a bunch of things selected, it'll print out everything I have selected. So now I'll say if size selection is equal to, remember we use two equal symbol, zero, print, nothing is selected. Let's try running this and I'll say nothing is selected. And if I select something and run it, it prints the selection. So I'm going to add an else statement. I'm going to say print, you have something selected. If I now run this, you can see that it says you have something selected. And I have a typo, so let me fix that. 
And if I deselect everything and run it again, you can see that it says nothing is selected. This shows the power of an if statement. It lets our code branch off and allows it to be a little smarter than just doing everything in order. If you're interested in learning more about programming inside of Maya, check out my popular Python for Maya course, which is linked in the video description below.